Megan from Beauty Blog. I'm here at the Mac Pro Store on Union Street, Nessa. And um, I'm here because I'm going to meet with Victor Sembella. We're going to talk about the new master class brushes. And he's just going to run me through how to use them. I know that I posted a video on Instagram a while back of tabs like kind of pawing at the brushes. And they're the funky looking ones. They look like black tooth brushes. So hopefully Victor will give me a little bit more uh, knowledge of how to use these brushes and how you can use them too. So let's take a look. Okay, so this is the oval number six, and obviously it's the one that gets the most attention because it's large and it really sort of shows the full surface face of the new Masterclass brushes. Okay. Um, you can do foundation with these. I've been using actually our tinted moisturizer. You can do face and body like you love. Um, and basically you're going to be using a more of a motion of skimming across the surface of the skin. So I think a lot of times with the traditional brush, there's a lot of tapping and stippling. Right. These are a lot more like push-pull, stop, start, skim in, in circles on the face. Okay. Um, so you can do your whole foundation with these. What I'm excited to show you about is how to stay sort of matte. And I think one of the things we have in common is our skin tends to get oily during the day. Oh my day. gosh, yeah, especially my forehead is like, hello. Yeah, I know, my whole thing, I'm like, you can practically see yourself in my forehead by the end of the day. Um, so there's a product that actually, it's funny, like not a lot of people know about this product, but it's my favorite from our priming story. It's called Skin Refined Zone. Um, and basically what it is, is it's a mattifier. It also it helps to reduce the size of pores or imperfections on the skin. Um, so I use it with the oval number six to literally like Photoshop the skin so it literally looks blurred. Oh my gosh, talk to me. Okay, so. <laughs> Show me the way. Yes, here we go, it's gonna be easy. I'm not sure if you wanna try to get in for a close up on this, but. Uh, Maybe if I just. Oh, you wanna Maybe try I'm it? Maybe I'm myself. Okay, so. I'm a brave girl. Okay, I got it. <laughs> So we're going to load up the tool about this much product, okay. and basically at first it starts off really creamy, okay. but um, you're going to almost feel it snag, and when it snags is when the uh, mattification starts. Okay, well maybe you should do it first, and then okay, I will... And then you'll continue on. Basically anywhere that you are shiny, feel that my pressure is barely even there, and it's starting to snag, and you're going to start seeing literally like all the shine go away. So you continue on. Okay. So, a little bit of pull, like... Yeah, pull, push. Ooh, it's so soft. I know, isn't it crazy? Okay. It's literally like you're like buffing your skin out with velvet. But look at the shine. Start on this area as well. Okay. So maybe right here where you can see that you're a little bit shiny. Okay, and then just back and forth, back yeah. and forth. Exactly. Or you can even turn it like you want to do it like a toothbrush. You can do it that way as well, whatever's like comfortable. Oh, yeah. okay. But do you see the mattification yeah. starting? Oh, totally. And literally blurring out uh, pores. So I would put this on top of my makeup? You can. I mean, you already had a little foundation on, correct? Yeah, I had some powder too. Yeah, so basically what I like to say is that when you're using powder, if you think about it, so say we're actually touching up the powder. Um, I feel like the more you touch up, the more it just kind of layers and layers and layers. Whereas when you use just a creamy primer type product, it's dispersing the oil versus like pushing it and covering it into the skin. Okay. So it's an alternative to using powder. So if you are truly oily, um, you could use this like six or seven times during the day versus just putting on layer after layer after layer, which eventually builds and makes it look like a lot of makeup on. Mm -hmm. So that's so, why I like to use the Skin Refined Zone. Quick question for you. So yeah. if I were using this with foundation, would I be using the same sort of pulling kind of motion? Yeah, absolutely. And in fact, let's use a powder um, for how we would actually use yeah. foundation. Okay. Uh, let's use this shade right here. So this is our mineralized skin finish, natural, and this is medium deep. And basically, and we don't even, what's great about these tools is that the product doesn't go into the tool, it really stays topical on the surface, so you don't end up with a gunky brush like you do with some foundation brushes. So I can go literally from that cream we were using right into powder. Um, and you can maybe do like one swipe on your hand first to make sure it's even in the tool. And if you were doing foundation, the exact same idea of just skimming across the surface of the skin. If you wanted to do extra coverage on the chin, you could just focus it right there. I think this is actually giving me a little bit of a bronzy look. <laughs> so here, we'll even uh, we'll go to a lighter color as well. So we have two different shades. This one is medium plus. So maybe in the center of your face to give you that sort of Kim Kardashian sort of look. <laughs> we'll do a little bit of a lighter shade. But yeah, this would uh, be the exact same motion as if you were using foundation. So whether it's cream or powder, this will work just as well. I can't get over how soft the bristles are. They're super soft. Yeah, and there's so many, like hundreds of thousands of them that I feel like they, uh, they really form one surface face. 
And that's what makes them really unique is that you don't have little bristles that leave, um, I call them fingerprints, uh, yeah. <laughs> but those little sort of like firework marks that end up on the face from doing a flat foundation brush. Mm -hmm. It doesn't happen because there's almost like just one beautiful soft surface face. I think so. I mean, I think they're really, really easy. And what's great about them is, that, again, you're just buffing it through. So I find with traditional foundation brushes, it's like people tend to overuse product. And then when you overuse, things don't blend out. Uh, because it's like you have too much product, so it gets up to your hairline and there's nowhere for it to blend out. Whereas these almost force you to take it a little bit slow and like buff and sort of pull the makeup in so that you don't overuse product. Okay, so what's great about these uh, Masterclass brushes is there's really just three distinct sizes, so it kind of takes the guesswork. We left room, obviously, to expand the franchise, if you will. Um, but in the meantime, the first ones is just one for all of the face, so blush, foundation, primer, all of the things that will go on your whole face. Then we have a medium one. This is the Opal number three. Great for concealer, eye cream, um, shadows in the contour, and then we have our linear, uh, linear number one. And this is going to be good for blending out uh, eyeliner pencils, good for adding shadow eyeliner on top. Um, and you can even do like a little bit through the brow. I wouldn't necessarily try to do your whole brow with them, but you can blend out the edges of your brows with this one as well. So, okay. jumping straight into blush. All right. Um, you said you love Blush Baby. I love Blush Baby. Yeah, which I do as well. And what's great about these is that they tend to be, these are our sheer tone blushes. So they're sheer to begin with, and then you buff them right on top of some powder. Um, but if you look in the mirror, we're literally going to like find your cheekbone. And just, you can, you know, what's great about these angles is you can contour with this brush. You can find, like, you can feel how this brush is right under your cheekbone. Right. Or, because we powdered first, you can really just buff the blush through. Um, what I would recommend as a makeup artist is kind of set the face with powder before going straight in with your colors because because these have that beautiful surface face that's sort of a little bit more dense, if you don't powder first, things could almost cling straight to the foundation of the moisturizer. Um, so I like a little almost veil of powder so that you have like a medium or a mixing medium for the blush to work with. But look how beautiful, right? So we'll do the same thing. And if you notice, I'm going from the blush onto my hand for the first stroke okay. so that uh, it's really even in the surface of the tool. Okay. I think sometimes we go like this, you know, traditionally we go like this and we go straight to the face. It's a good idea just to kind of go back and forth and make sure that the color is really even on the surface. Okay. And then we're gonna go right here. You can see how this finds your cheekbone for you so beautifully. And then we're pulling it, we're pulling it right up to the apple of your cheek. Really nice shape. Yeah, it's yeah. gorgeous. I mean, especially too, there's this whole movement of contouring the face, um, and a lot of people don't know where their cheekbones are. So if you notice, this is a really good brush for just like I'm right under that cheekbone. Yeah, you are. And you can um, let's even go to a color like let's see, we have any set? So we're gonna get a contour color for you. All right. Um, this is called Style Blush. So what I love about Style is it's an apricot blush that's so going to give you a little color, but more importantly, it's got a shimmer in it. So you notice, again, I'm kind of warming it up on my hand first, and we're going to add a little bit of like a kind of shimmery cheekbone highlighter. And if you smile, you'll be able to use the oval number six just to like you're, like you're polishing up a penny. We're just going to polish up that style so that you get that beautiful bounce back. So I'm gonna smile for me. Jeez. <laughs> so basically just polishing, polishing. Why don't you try this yourself? Okay. So grab a little style. Grab a little bit. And then I'm going to yeah, take diffuse onto your hand if you'd like to. Okay. Or you then, can do that on a tissue if you're worried about getting your hand dirty at home. Just grab a little uh, tissue. Okay. It's just to make sure it's even in the tool. And then it's just to follow the natural planes of my face, smile, and just like. Yeah, and act like you're sort of like polishing up a penny, brushing your teeth, if you will. <laughs> We've been getting that a lot. It does, are, yeah, it kind of feels well, like... Well, I mean, you know, ergonomically speaking, it looks like how you <laughs> brush your teeth, but you're polishing. Think of it as polishing up your face. It's kind of fun, actually. Yeah, and it's, you know, again, it's just a different way of approaching your makeup, but the hundreds of thousands of bristles are making things move into the, make, uh, move into the skin, 
as opposed to sitting on the surface of the skin, and that's the huge difference. Okay, all right. So let's move into, um, this is gonna be the oval number three, and let's see here, let's go into, uh, let's try light plus. So we've been talking about that huge sort of Kim Kardashian movement, mm -hmm. <laughs> where everyone wants to look like they have a, a flashlight blasting off the center of their face. Right. So people are traditionally going lighter underneath the eyes, lighter on the surface of the skin. Okay. Um, these are our beauty balm yeah. compacts, and I think those are obviously the movement of BB creams and CC creams. Um, what I like is that for people who are novice to them, Using a beauty balm in a compact can be a little bit easier as opposed to squirting it. People don't know if it's before foundation or after moisturizer. So we're gonna use this from the compact. This is the oval number three. I'm gonna make it even on my hand first. And if you look at yourself in the mirror, so hold this up a little higher, maybe turn this way. Can you see? We're gonna use this right underneath the eye and it's like we're just addressing that little dash that we all have underneath the eye. That's where the eyeball sits into the face. So this is the area where we like to conceal. But I'm acting like I'm erasing this versus covering it. So I'm buffing it out. I'm buffing it a little lower out to the highlight of the face. And obviously you're no stranger to highlighting and contouring. No, I love it. I do it every day almost. Yeah, so this is just something that you can kind of add into your repertoire of tricks. But I'm literally moving this product all the way out coming over here on the high cheekbone and then addressing that little area where we like to do, I hate to say it, but the Kim K blowout. <laughs> so, yeah, when you look- nicely, I like how it just like- Yeah, it's a little bit more sort of like, it just addresses the exact area as opposed to bigger concealer brushes or with your finger, you're like overusing or you're not as accurate with your application. Okay. So why don't you try yes. it? I'm gonna make it work even in the brush. Okay. And then I'm going to get right here. Yeah, right under that little dash we and all have. And then we're just going to go back and forth, back and uh -huh. forth, gently. Yep. And then, just how about buffing. circular motions? That's you can, yeah, I love it. Act like you're like sort of gliding. Think like ice okay. skating. <laughs> ice skating with the master class so, yeah, brushes. So we're doing figure <laughs> eights. We're ice skating and skimming across the surface of the skin. Okay, got it. But it looks great. And what's nice is that this is the first time you've really like picked up these tools and you're sort of, it's like your hand is forced to just do the motions yeah. that the brush wants you to it go with. It feels really natural. Yeah. Which I think is what's great about them is the way that we even design the handle, the way your thumb's supposed to go on this part, like it all sort of makes sense without having to have a master class and how to use the master class brushes. Okay, this is rad. So, okay, walk me through a couple more things. Yeah, let's do it. Um, let me see here. So, I mean, naturally people want to use these for eyeshadow products. So. Mm -hmm. Just like when you would pick up different tools, and that's why we carry 40 different tools at MAC, I wouldn't say let's do your entire eyeshadow with one brush. Um, where this would be good is for your medium contour color. So a lot of people have problems with finding that socket, that yes. crease, you know? Okay, yeah. So what's great about the Masterclass brushes, this is the oval number three, and what we're gonna do is, if you look in the mirror, so I'm gonna kind of lightly lift, and I'm just gonna start gliding this right through the contour. So you would probably be doing, uh, be doing this motion a little bit more. Okay. I'm coming from a different makeup artist angle, so I'm doing this motion. Okay. But again, the brush finds this sort of bone structure for you, and it just slides right in and out, and instantly applies your contour color without all the fuss and circles and wisps. It just kind of does it all for you. So much so that you can actually add a secondary layer. This is called bamboo which is one of my favorite sort of romantic candlelit browns. And you can even, like, say you wanted to get all of the way in here and you could, you know, contour down the side of the nose, you can do all of that with the oval number three brush. Okay. So why don't you try it? I'll load Great. it up. So this is more the back and forth sweeping gliding motion. Yeah. Okay. So, and I would hold it. You can hold it that way or whatever feels comfortable, but you'll okay. you'll find that the brush will find it for you and ah, just okay. skimming it really lightly. Got it. Ice yeah. skating, figure eights. Kind of like windshield fiber. Yeah. But what makes it different is that because of the density of the brush, if you almost hold it a little sideways as you're looking, let the brush actually find that bone for you. Okay. So we'll try, try a layer number two. All right. And let the side of the brush find that contour. There oh, we go. Oh, okay, there, there, there. It's good, right? I see. Yes. Gosh, that makes it so easy. Yeah. So it's um my advice too, the thing that will, more so than even how you hold them, the thing that will take a little bit of getting used to is the gliding motion versus how we used to use brushes, which was 
close your eye and get in there and like sort of like blend by force. Mm -hmm. This is blend by blend by uh, glide, not blend by force. Okay, got so it. blending by gliding, not blending by like scrubbing. Okay, okay, okay great. Um, and let's go, of course, into the linear one, which I'm excited to show you. So this one will take me just a second of prepping. Two ways of using this. You can either, um, if you have those great eye pencils that have color to them, so pops of color are obviously in style. And I was inspired by your cute kitty cat outfit. So you brought over a blues pencil. And how you can use this is either by putting an eyeliner inside the eye and sort of rocking it out of the eye with the linear brush. Okay. Or I'm literally just going to pick up this product from the blues pencil. So now I have the actual liner, and I'm going to create a smudge liner look. Okay. So hold the mirror in the other hand if you don't mind. Oh, righty. And hold it a little higher. Okay. And right underneath the eye, we're just going to glide back and forth with the linear number one. And as I sort of turn it downward, it's going to blend the color out for me. So I go from this angle, and then I start rocking it down. And that rocking it down is what's going to blend it out for you. Or you can pull and glide. But if you look, that was like instant underneath smoky yeah. eye. That's really pretty. Yeah, and, and let me... it just has so nicely diffused and it's simple. It was like yeah, there's no drama. Six, yeah. I wasn't like there for like days, a little pencil brush. Yeah, yeah. It's so quick. just simple. Just going from this angle down to this angle, and to set it, just to give you a little pop of color, I'm gonna use a little bit of this color called Parfait Amour. Okay. So holding your pie again, and chin down a tad. So right under here, we're gonna set it with. Parfait Amour and literally just acting like I'm setting powder so that you have this great little pop of you know, natural but a little bit of a purple color so that you have a flare that goes with a cute dress. Simple. Mm -hmm. So two steps. So why don't you, we'll have you repeat the exact same thing. Oh, okay, I'm a little nervous, not gonna lie. Don't worry, okay. I'm not gonna mess this up. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna take the pencil yep. and then Grab a little bit off the top. Exactly. Okay. I think that's enough. Yeah, sounds good to me. Okay. And then I'm going to just gently take it. Uh huh. So at this angle first, kind of going straight in and okay. then beginning to rock the bedding. Okay. So I'm going to go in like this underneath the lashes. Uh -huh. Yep. And, and we're gliding. Exactly. So do you recommend like short strokes or like one long continuous? Um, if you're gliding with less pressure, so once you get more comfortable with them, you can do longer strokes. When okay. you first begin, um, if your pressure is a little harder, I would do shorter strokes okay. because it'll pull the skin a little bit. Um, but yeah, that's great. All I right. think we have one little spot here. Oh, look up at the ceiling. We have one little spot where you first touch down. There we go. Okay. Now, why don't you set it with the Parfait Amour? Okay. And this one, what I did was I actually almost pressed it into short little segments. Okay, so I'm going to grab this. Yep. Take a little bit off. Yep. And then press it almost like you're connecting three pieces of like a jigsaw puzzle okay. together. So press, yep, set, move over and set. And one more time, move over and set. Okay. And then now that it's all set, now you can go back and forth and make it blend. Got it. And that's a great, I mean, if you're looking for sort of a tip for holiday of how to play with color. Um, using color underneath the eye is a great spot just to pop in a little bit of accent. Um, whereas sometimes when you do it across the lid, it's like you have to kind of show people by like closing your eyes and taking off your glasses. So I love when you play with color underneath because when you look at the person, they can see the little pop of color straight on, not having to lean your head back and show them. And it's so easy to do. Yeah. This was so wonderful. Thank you so much for showing me how to use these I know, they're great. And I think that the readers appreciate like learning all these tips and tricks. So thank you. Absolutely. Thanks for coming down. Oh, thank you. And you know what, too? Also, if you want to learn how to use them, um, I would recommend to your readers, just book an appointment at one of our stores. Okay. So book an appointment and literally our, our professional makeup artists who work for Matt mm -hmm. will walk you through how to do everything and how to do your makeup and use the new Masterclass brushes. That's great. Sounds good. Perfect. Thank right. you so much, Karen. Thank you, Victor. All right. Bye, guys. Bye. <laughs>